Hey guys, Dean here. Okay, so we usually do a lot of upbeat, fun, make you feel good moment uh, kind of videos and stuff like that, tutorials, and we have a blast in here. For the first time ever, for ET Transport, I'll do my story of a situation that happened in 2017. Life-changing moment in my trucking career and in my life. Had a bad uh, a bad wreck. There'll be some pictures up and stuff you guys will be able to see. Anyways, uh, what happened on that day? Day like any other, you know, jumped in the truck, did my circle check, made, every, made sure everything was good to go. Load was strapped down. I had a load of uh, lumber on. It was stacked about six high, I guess. Full load, probably weighing somewhere in around 130,000 pounds truck and load. Beautiful day, kind of like today. I guess you could probably see in the background, something like today, sun was shining. It was dry roads, just your average, average day. Chatted on the phone with some friends a little bit. Having a, a regular day, I was out in Sarnia, Ontario, and going around a bend in the road. There was a 90 kilometer hour per hour highway. It was a bend that bends to the left. I would call it a blind corner or a blind bend. Uh, lots of trees and shrubbery and stuff like that. So you can't see around the bend in the road. Anyways, uh, looking forward, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a car comes completely sideways around the corner. It was, uh, you know, like I guess if you see some of the drifting stuff that they do with cars where they drift around the corners. It looked just like that. First glance at the car, it was sideways coming around the corner. I figured to myself that the car was going to hit the soft shoulder. It was a gravel shoulder on, on my side. And the car was far enough on across the road that it actually came into my lane and was touching the shoulder on my side. I figured at that point the car was probably going to um, go into the ditch on that side and uh, lose control. And, and that would have probably been the best scenario for everybody but accidents are exactly that. You don't have a lot of time to react and to think and everything happens in a split second. This is one of those freak kind of things where instead of the car going into the ditch, losing control, it somehow with the tires rotating gained traction. And when it gained traction, it shot straight out into the middle of the highway, coming straight back at me. It's a difficult call to make at that time because I'm going around a blind corner. You know, there could be another car coming around that corner. There could be a transport coming around that corner and you'd never see it until it's too late. But when the car shot back out at me, I hit my brakes and I swerved into the oncoming lane to try to avoid the car coming back, but it was too late. The, uh, the car hit me head on and it was a little sedan, just like a Honda or a high-end style car. I don't want to give out so many details on it, but it was, it was a small car like that. The car hit me head on uh, into the front of the truck and it hit me at such a force that it basically went right underneath the truck. It tore the, the steer, steer axle right off of the truck. Now with the car sitting underneath my truck, it was kind of like a skateboard effect. Instead of having uh, steering with my steering wheel, I'm just sitting on a skateboard that is uh, only going in one direction. Because it's at that bend, I can't go straight. I'm actually going into the bend now because I swerved to, to miss the car. I can't steer and it takes me off the road into uh, a ravine. The truck flipped over, uh, rolled down into the ravine. So now it was laying on the, you know, basically kind of on the roof, side roof uh, of, the, of the tractor. Uh, the car kind of spit out from underneath the truck. Again, you know, like accident, when, when you sit back and you kind of look at it and you try to put it into perception on how long the accident actually took to happen was probably, you know, it took me how long to explain it to you, but it actually probably took about three seconds, um, three to five seconds from the time that I seen the car to the time that, you know, I'm laying on the, on the roof of the truck. Anyways, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was, it was really bad. Everything kind of slowed down, went slow motion when it, when it happened at, at like at impact. 
it's almost like when you're recording on your phone and uh, you do like a slow-mo video you know you're watching that slow-mo and you see it just going regular time and then all of a sudden it kicks into slow-mo it's exactly what it was like to to explain it you know regular time watching everything happen slow-mo as soon as i point of impact uh to the resting area i laid on the on the roof for a little while the windshield had come out uh, I remember hearing people coming up to the truck and uh, yelling in to see if I was okay. I was fine um, by the grace of somebody looking over me, you know, I, I, w I was fine. I was uh, bumped and bruised up a little bit and, and I had, uh, you know, cuts and scrapes and I was bleeding in some spots, but not bad at all. Anyways, uh, the water was rushing in the truck and I'm trying to reach around still I don't know, like professional through and through. I'm, I'm looking for my, my log books. I'm looking for my load, uh, the, the run sheets and the load stuff so I can give all this stuff back to the company so they can get this load delivered. Luckily enough, probably 80 to 90% of the load stayed on the trailer, which is pretty crazy. It just means I guess I did my job right there. Anyways, long story, um, get out of the truck, climb through the through the window, grab a few things, uh, I get out and in the corner of my eye, I can see the car and it wasn't good. It, uh, it was in really, really bad shape and something deep in my, in my heart told me that uh, it didn't work out very good for the other driver. Um, I didn't think they had made it. Ambulance showed up, fire truck, police, uh, everything like that. Um, they took me in the ambulance to, uh, to a hospital the one officer sat there and he waited with me. He was amazing. This, this, this officer was uh, second to none. Kudos to Sarnia police. Anyways, he sat with me through the entire um, time I was in the, in the hospital. I guess all I kept saying was, how's the other driver? How is the other driver? It's, it's really, I didn't care about anything at that point. It was just uh, how the other driver had made out. And uh, he says, I can't tell you much right now, but uh, I can promise you that you, by the time you leave the hospital today, you'll, you'll know. That's all I could think about. And I come off as uh, a pretty buffed up, uh, you know, strong guy. But uh, let me tell you, I was, uh, I was in tears the entire time sitting in the hospital. Couldn't care less what had happened to me. Anyways, to kind of steer this in a little bit different direction, and to show you the importance of <clears throat> not texting and driving and uh, making sure you're in the right frame of mind when you're in your transport. Laying in the hospital bed, a detective came in and uh, started asking me questions. He wanted to know which direction the, the truck was going. Was I on my phone? Did I have an argument on my phone earlier? Had I talked to anybody? You know, the, the questions started flying. And did I want a lawyer? And uh, I was, I was, I was blown away. I said, um, "What do I need a lawyer for? Like, I didn't do anything wrong, but the questions kept flying. And uh, we're going to confiscate your phone, and we're going to find out. We're going to get the truth behind this. And you know, it's uh, we're operating this big piece of equipment. And uh, let me tell you, man, the laws and the police and the detectives and stuff like that." They're piecing these things together and they want an answer and somebody's got to be responsible for this. Us being the truck driver, we're the first person that they're looking at, right? What did I do wrong that caused this accident? It scared the living hell out of me. As much as kudos to the Sarnia police, this detective, horrible guy, absolutely horrible guy. No compassion whatsoever in an incident like this. You think you'd have a little bit more couth, but uh, not at all. Not at all. That, that guy, big thumbs down. I called a lawyer. The lawyer told me, you know, don't say another word. And that's basically where that ended. And everything went uh, to the lawyers from there on in. The officer, the Sarnia police officer, the thumbs up guy, he, he sat there the entire time. They phoned my wife and let them know. They phoned my company and let them know. He did what he said. He sat there the entire time with me until uh, it was getting time to release me from the hospital. And I kept asking over and over, you know, how's the driver? And he said, uh, I regret to inform you, but uh, she didn't make it. It was a lady and uh, she didn't make it. And 
No, I'm sorry if I seem a little choked up, but it's a tough one, man. It's a, it's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, it, uh, the lady didn't, lady didn't make it. She died pretty much instantly. Uh, I had a feeling, but uh, nothing prepares you for that kind of information. You know, you're a professional driver, but you just took a human life. And uh, man, I'll tell you, I think I probably, I didn't talk to anybody. I, I, once I got home, like my, my boss showed up, him and, uh, and my manager, they showed up and, and they brought me back to our yard and they reassured me everything was okay all the way back. And they were very, very helpful. Like, I mean, I can't say anything better about a company than these guys. They were top of the line, top of the line. And uh, I got home, obviously was consoled by uh, my wife and my kids. I just kind of went into a shell. All I could do was replay the accident in my head, second guessing myself and uh, what could have I done if I would have braked sooner, if I would have swerved harder, if I would have, uh, you know, like what could have I done to prevent this accident and prevent this from happening? And uh, every single time I played it through in my head, I did the same thing. I reacted the same way. I, I honestly don't think in, in, in my heart that there's anything I could have done to prevent that accident. It was exactly that. It was a, a freak thing that happened for no reason, but uh, I probably laid downstairs. I wouldn't talk to my family, not my wife or my kids because they were there, but uh, I wasn't taking calls from my mother or my sister, or family and stuff like that. Just didn't want to deal with anybody. Probably cried for a month, two months straight. You wouldn't think that that much water could come out of, out of your body, but uh, yeah, I, I, I cried for about a month straight. Eventually, you know, I, I, I started dealing with it and I was talking to people and, uh, and trying to cope with uh, what had happened. My work had called, I obviously had to go in and still do some things and talk to lawyers and stuff like that. And they said, you know, you, you gotta come back. You gotta get back in the seat. And uh, I didn't wanna drive. I didn't wanna drive anymore. I'd, I'd work McDonald's or something, you know, like, uh, at least I can't hurt anybody there. Again, this company was absolutely phenomenal, outstanding back for what they do for their drivers. He says, I'll tell you what, come in, sit in the truck. You don't even have to put the key in the ignition. Just sit in the truck, sit behind the wheel for a little while. If you feel comfortable, start it up. And then that's it, go home, but make sure you come back. Next day was, you know what, start it up and in the parking lot here at work, just back it up and go forward and backwards or whatever you want to do with the truck. You just do it here in the yard, be comfortable with it, get comfortable in the truck. And eventually it went from that to with no trailer, taking the truck around the, the block a couple times and shifting some gears. And then do you want to take a load just, you know, from here up to that little drop yard up the street? Eventually I started driving again, got back in the seat and started gaining a little bit more confidence again, believing in myself again. It's tough because the whole time that you're driving, you're, you're, this is still in the back of your mind. Fast forward along quite a while through. So where I'm telling you guys about the texting and driving, they confiscated my phone. They have up to two years to lay criminal charges against you, vehicular manslaughter and like that. So the whole time that now I'm back driving, this is all on my mind. You know, what's on my phone? I knew I wasn't texting, so I wasn't worried about that. I knew I wasn't on the phone. I use a portable headset that I, that I use when I'm driving. So I knew I wasn't on the phone. I knew I wasn't doing anything wrong. But in the back of your mind for two years, you have this, am I gonna get charged? Am I gonna go to jail? Am I, you know, is my career done? Is, uh, you know, it eats away at you. Two years almost to the day, I get a phone call from my, from my work and they said, it's all over. It's come to an end. They found uh, negligence on the other part. I won't go into details. Um, on what it was, but uh, basically the other the other driver was not fit to be behind the wheel. Everything got dropped and thrown out of court. And I'll tell you, I had to pull the truck over the <laughs> over to the side of the road to try to gain my composure because it was that much of a a load lifted off your shoulder. You could finally put a little bit of a resolution behind it and start to you know heal from it a little bit. Had I been texting or anything, you know, that would have been a complete, 
different scenario. So where you guys are, you know, you're, you're driving along and you think just sending that quick text, just think of something like that, you know, like, I mean, it happens in a split second. It's going to be, it's, it's a life changing moment anyways. It'll be something I'll never forget about, obviously. I've since had the chance to go to the accident site and say my piece to the, uh, to the other driver and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. And um, when you guys are out on the road, don't take your eyes off the road for a minute. I hear stories about people watching movies and uh, doing different things while they're driving and it's, uh, it's, it's not worth it. You know what, pull over to the side of the road. If you're tired, pull over. It's something you don't want to live with for the rest of your life. Anyways, I will uh, I'll wrap this up, but uh, I don't want to drag it on. I hope you guys got something out of this, and I, I hope uh, you can see in, in, in my heart that uh, this was truly something that I, I wish I was never part of. I'll always think of the other, the other person. You guys being out there, you got, lo you got loved ones at home. You got family at home. Every other person out here on the road around us, they're the same, man. They got family at home, they got loved ones, and at the end of the day, we all want to go home safe. So don't take chances. Uh, be safe out there. That's about it. You know, you can like and put thumbs up. It's kind of a thumbs down thing, but uh, like and make sure you, you subscribe. As always, the comments. Guys, uh, feel free to comment. Please leave uh, any kind of derogatory comments out. I'm not going to respond to those. And uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of this and uh, I hope it hits home. Some of you other drivers out there, I'm sure have been in the same situation and you've gone through the same thing and my heart goes out to you. Anybody who's been involved in a, in a motor vehicle accident in a transport, my heart goes out to you um, and your families and stuff like that. And to the drivers, both men and women out there that are operating these that have su succumbed to the injury of the road, you know, and, uh, and not made it home. God bless you and, you know, air horns to you. Love you guys. Keep the shiny side up, keep the rubber side down, and we will catch you for a different video next time. See you guys.